Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about my current beauty favorites. There's a lot of good stuff, really, really, really good stuff that I'm excited to share with you. And I also have some disappointing products that just didn't do it for me. Starting with skincare, I'm really happy with my skin at the moment. I have some newer products that I had been incorporating that have just really, really agreed with my skin. So I'm excited to share them with you. The first is this uh, mask, Jordan Samuel Skin exfoliating mask it contains mandelic acid it's a clay mask it also has exfoliating properties and it is so beautiful it's really really gentle mandelic acid I think is the most gentle of the exfoliating acids it has a larger molecular size so it doesn't penetrate your skin as deeply so the potential for irritation is a lot less. What I love about this mask is that it is a clay mask. It does have exfoliating properties, but it also has glycerin and it's loaded with hydrating ingredients at the same time. So it never dries out all crusty. It's recommended to, to be used one to two times a week. You leave it on for 15 to 20 minutes. That's kind of how I use it. I just follow the instructions. If I use it one to two times a week, I just kind of take a break from the retinoids and I use this. Instead, I just love it. It leaves my skin feeling really soft. It does a great job at exfoliating my skin in a really gentle way without irritating my skin, without um, disrupting my skin barrier. I think if you're somebody that usually has more sensitive skin and you can't tolerate a lot of the hardcore acids, but you just need something to help, you know, dissolve any, any dry skin, to help smooth out your texture, this is a great product to incorporate into your routine a couple of times a week. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite Jordan Samuel Skin products, and this is one of my favorite skincare brands. Jordan Samuel Skin is also running um, their annual holiday sale right now, so if you want to check out the brand, definitely check it out. And if you want to check out this product, now is the time. I also really love their cleansers. Their cleansers are some of my favorite. The Matinee Gel Cleanser, the Matinee Cream Cleanser are top tier products for me. Another product that I have been so, so, so happy with, and I, I don't use the term holy grail uh, lightly, but this is a, pretty much a holy grail product for me. And it's the Saatchi Skin Pro Resilience Serum. This is a hydrating serum. It also contains antioxidants and it also contains some peptides. So it's a multi-purpose hydrating serum. It's not just hydrating. It also helps strengthen the skin barrier with bioflavonoids and peptides. It helps support a strong skin barrier and it also helps with just aging gracefully. It's kind of like a multi-purpose hydrating serum. It's very lightweight and, and watery. It sinks in very quickly and it just makes my skin, my thirsty skin feel really, really quenched. It's a beautiful serum. It is pricey, but it's like a three-in-one essentially and I use this morning and night. And then along the same lines, this moisturizer, again, it's been, a, it's been a good half of the year for skincare because this is another product that I would consider pretty close to holy grail for me and it's the Stradia Liquid Gold Moisturizer. It is so beautiful. It's really lightweight, really nourishing, and you know, it's it has this beautiful bright yellow color. It's not artificial. This color comes from the sea buckthorn oil in the product. There's no scent or anything. I mean, it smells like sea buckthorn. But there's no uh, synthetic fragrance. I mean, none of the products have any sort of, of fragrance to them, any sort of added fragrance. This smells like nothing. And then, like I said, this just kind of smells like ingredients. It smells, smells like sea buckthorn oil, which is one of the oils that my skin actually really likes. But it's a very, very lightweight, but very nourishing moisturizer. My skin loves this. Price point is great. I like the packaging. It's not quite as thick and lush as the SkinCeuticals Triple, Lip Triple Lipid Restore. I feel like that's that's another one of my favorite moisturizers, especially for the dead of winter. But for the rest of the year, this moisturizer, I have, you know, combination oily skin. But my skin's also dehydrated, but I hate thick, heavy, greasy textures. I like really lightweight textures but I like them to also, you know, deliver and pack a punch. This does that. I am so, so smitten with this moisturizer. It's so good. So those are my current skincare favorites. In terms of base products, I'm going to be a broken record with this one, but 
This combination is still a go-to favorite of mine, the EXA Hydrating Oil-Free Primer and the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This primer just extends the wear of the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in such a beautiful way. My, my makeup looks luminous and fresh all day long and I don't get the same result when I use this just by itself. A go-to combination for me. This is just a really lightweight hydrating primer but as the name suggests, it's oil-free and has some oil control capabilities. So if you're somebody that usually, um, again, if you have combo skin, usually you get kind of oily in the T-zone throughout the day. This is a really beautiful primer that just kind of helps balance things out. You know, sometimes in my T-zone, makeup tends to break up towards the end of the day, especially if I'm using a more luminous foundation like Armani Luminous Silk. I don't have any issues when I use this primer. So I've been really happy with it. This is also fragrance-free, doesn't, doesn't smell like anything. Um, has a really pleasant texture and it's not like super silicone -y slick or anything so big big fan and then on the days in which I want a more polished like satin matte finish like today the Makeup Forever <laughs> HD Skin Foundation is just such such a good foundation this is ugh, I love this foundation again very close to holy grail status for me I feel like if the the color was just like a little bit more neutral it would be just chef's kiss for me. I do find that this color range leans a little bit yellow, so it could be tricky to find a color match. I mean, I can definitely work with it. I use the shade 1N14. I love it because it wears beautifully. Don't really have to, to do too much maintenance. You know, I don't really have to blot as much throughout the day. I don't really have to powder it so much. It just looks like skin. If you like the Dior Face and Body Foundation, this is very similar to that. I don't have the Dior Face and Body Foundation anymore. I used it up. So I can't like do a direct comparison, but the Dior Face and Body Foundation is another one of my top tier holy grail favorites. I think if you like the Dior Face and Body and you just kind of want to try something new, give this a try. I like this a little bit better because I like the packaging better. I like that it's in a pump. The Dior bottle is like a squeeze bottle. It can get a little bit messy. And this color match works year round for me. Whereas with Dior, the 2WO, color that I used to use. I loved the undertone of that, but that one really only matched me if I was like fake tanning or in the summertime. The lighter shades that I had tried in the Dior foundation weren't as good. I'd say in terms of wear time and, and the way that they, they behave on the skin, they're very similar. If you like one, you'll like the other. For concealer, I um, went back to an old fave. This is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer. The Giorgio Armani website had a 50% off Singles Day sale. I didn't even know Singles Day was a thing. When did Singles Day become a holiday? Because I'm pretty sure when I was single, there was no Singles Day. And I would have appreciated it at the time. This was 50% off, so it's a concealer that I love. I had used up some under eye concealers, so I was, I was in the market for something new. But then I was like, wait a minute, I already know that this is a tried and true favorite. Might as well just repurchase this one. So I have this back in my life and I love this for the under eyes. The Lancome Tanti Doll Concealer is very, very similar. I remember when that concealer first launched, I did like an ingredient by ingredient comparison. They are almost identical. They're also owned by the same parent company. But the only difference is that in the same spot in the ingredients list where the, uh, the Lancome has like three different botanical extracts and instead of that, this has vitamin E oil. So you can kind of feel it in the formula this is just a little bit more emollient than the Lancome. So for me and my under eye situation, this is just a little bit more flattering under my eyes, especially in the fall and winter. Whereas the Lancome is better on all other areas of my face. It sets a bit more and it has a bit more lasting power. Whereas this is just more flattering under the eyes. This is quite a pricey concealer, so it's nice to get a good discount. Like 50% off is a really great price. And I use the shade four in this. Uh, it has like a slightly peachy undertone. It's not too bright. It just kind of matches my skin, just a little bit peachy. Um, it's a great shade for me for under the eyes. So this is another favorite. Obviously I had to buy the Makeup by Mario palette. <laughs> this palette is like catnip for me. It's everything I love in eyeshadow just put into one beautiful, beautiful palette. Is this boring? Is this really neutral? And, and is this just another neutral eyeshadow palette? Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure it's not. It's, it's not reinventing the wheel by any means. But for me, 
I loved every single color and I, this is just something that I love. This is the uh, style of eye makeup. This complements the style of eye makeup that I do on the daily and this is something where every single color I can use regularly, you know, and this is this is just so so good. I bought this during the Sephora sale and I have zero regrets. I love I love it. The quality is really nice. The mattes are so easy to blend. I love the fact that there are more mattes then shimmers and the shimmers are just so beautiful there are three um kind of like sheer sheer sparkly shadows and the sparkles are very very small they're not big and chunky like the um the pat mcgrath ones for example but you know if you use a wet brush you can get more impact um, then there are these two metallic shades that are also really beautiful i just can't fault this palette honestly this is I love it. You know, if you're somebody with a very robust makeup collection, if you have a lot of eyeshadow palettes, if you have like the Tartlet in Bloom palettes, um, those plus like a glitter topper would give you the same look. You know, when you're out and about in the world, no one's going to be looking at your eyes and be like, oh, she's just wearing the Tartlet in Bloom. She's not wearing the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. Like, nobody, no, nobody will know. The, the look and the general vibe of the look is the same. You can definitely recreate any looks you could create with this palette with stuff you probably already own. So don't feel like you're missing out. I hate that, that, that it's limited edition. I feel like this should be permanent. But anyway, I hate when brands use the limited edition tactic to get people to buy something that they probably don't need. If you're on a low buy, if you're on a no buy, if you're trying to save money, if you're on a budget, like don't feel like you have to, don't feel like you're missing out. You know, it's, it's a beautiful palette, but there will be other palettes in the world. But I am really happy with it. I feel like it just... It fits in beautifully in my makeup collection. I genuinely love every single shade and I will use every single shade, which is what enabled me to, to click to click purchase. This is essentially like a larger format of another palette that I really love, this little Shantikai Giraffe Quad that launched earlier this year. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow quads that I own. So this is like, the big version of this, essentially. The textures of the eyeshadows are very similar. The Chantecaille glitters are a little bit, the base of these glitters is a little bit more pigmented. They're not quite as sheer as the Mario ones, but they're very, very similar. So these, the two glitters in here are the glitters from the Chantecaille Giraffe quad. So in terms of, of glitter, glitter particle size and effect and the way the formula feels, these are the closest to the uh, the Makeup by Mario glitters. These three are the Makeup by Mario glitters. And then these two are the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex shadows. This is the shade Anais and this is the shade Emily. So they're not the same, but as part of a complete eyeshadow look, you can kind of use them to achieve a similar vibe, a similar style of look. Another product that I discovered during the Sephora sale is this uh, Giorgio Armani Neo Nude Melting Color Balm. This is not a new product, it's new to me. And this is very boring and unassuming in the pan, but this is such a gorgeous one and done blush and eyeshadow color for me. I love this. This is like if Burberry Earthy Blush and Chantecaille Sylvie eyeshadow had a baby. It is so nice. The texture is really cool. It's like a it's a cream to powder texture, but it's very silky, very smooth, so easy to work with. I love applying this on my cheeks with this BK Beauty brush. This is a 107 brush from BK Beauty. Um, and it just, it kind of does it all. If I'm in a rush, I just slap this on my cheeks and on my eyes and that's it. Layers nicely with, you know, foundation and other powders on top. It is just the kind of makeup that I love that's easy, that's approachable, and I can do it day or night. And then I also really love the Chantecaille Sylvie eyeshadow. This is a bit more intense um, in terms of, of pigment. This is also like a little bit more warm than the Armani number 20. And obviously this also has like a slight sheen in terms of finish. And this is just a straight up eyeshadow. Even together, like today, I put them on together. I just used a little bit of the Chantecaille Sylvie just towards the outer corner and in the crease just for a little bit more of a subtle definition. The Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex Shadows. I've been using the shade Emily a lot. This is what I'm wearing today. I just kind of slapped this on um, 
just in the center of the lid, very close towards the lash line, so it catches the light the most. And this eyeshadow look is actually very similar to an eyeshadow look that I create with the, with the Makeup by Mario palette. So this just goes to show that you don't need this eyeshadow palette, especially if you have a lot of eyeshadows. Um, but there are very subtle differences. I love applying these shadows with fingers. I just kind of apply them on the center of the lid and then tap, tap, tap to blend them out. These are the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex. Um, I use the shade Emily more. It's just a bit more easy to slap on every day, but Anais is just so unique and special. Um, definitely requires a shout out too. And speaking of Lisa Eldridge, she is launching eyeshadows, like powder eyeshadows, eyeshadow palettes, and I did order one. Um, I have very high expectations, so I am excited. I will be doing a video when I do receive it. I ordered the Vega palette. I'll be letting you know how I feel about those, but these I really, really love. And then finally for lips, what is this called? I keep getting this and Anywhere Caffeine messed up, but this is Endless Cacao. So the Endless Cacao lip liner, it's just like a taupey, cool toned brown. It's really great for defining the lips. It gives almost like a shadow effect. So I've been really into this lip liner and then just any, any more brownish lip product on top. Today I'm wearing this Chantecaille lip, uh, lip tint in the shade Sunflower. I think this is limited edition. And then for just a hint of juice in the middle of the lips, this is so gorgeous. This is a lip balm from Mara. The name of it is the Sea Silk Lip Balm. I love the name. And this is in the shade Soft Coral. It's a tinted lip balm and it feels so incredible on the lips. It's really thick and nourishing and balmy. The tint is, it's like the perfect amount of tint. This looks amazing by itself or just with a lip liner or sometimes I just add it in the center of the lips when I'm wearing a more brown lip combo and it just gives me like a hint of color. I love this soft coral shade. This will be beautiful in the summertime as well. And it just feels so, so nourishing. I feel like it helps kind of plump up any lines that I have in my lips. It's really, really flattering. I wish it had like an easy applicator top because you just kind of have to squeeze it out and then use a finger to spread it on the lips. I wish it had um, like a, a lip applicator so I can just apply it straight from the tube. I don't like to use my finger to reapply lip products throughout the day so I can't just throw this in my purse and reapply it throughout the day, um, which I would have liked. It has like a like an herbal an herbal scent. It's, it's like a spa herbal scent, but it's, it's, it's soft, it's subtle, it's not overwhelming. Uh, I don't keep smelling it throughout the day or anything, but yeah. Mara, your lip balm is incredible, but please give me a little lip applicator so I can throw this in my bag and just apply liberally throughout the day. That's all I want. Something like this, you know? This is, um, I love this lip balm too. This is an Ilia lip balm. It's clear and it just has this really nice cooling ceramic tip applicator. So it's just easy to, uh, to reapply throughout the day. That's it for beauty favorites. I do have one random favorite um, that I wanted to talk about and it's this candle. It's the Byredo Symphonique candle. And wow, this is the perfect fall winter scent. It's really, really cozy. It's, it's not too spicy, not too woodsy, not too sweet. It's kind of like a beautiful mixture of the two, but it kind of has, you know, cozy cinnamon, Oh, it smells like a luxurious apple pie next to a fireplace. <laughs> That's kind of what this smells like to me. I wouldn't call this a gourmand candle. It's just very sophisticated. Would be a very nice, luxurious treat for the holiday season. So those are all the favorites. Now let's get on to some disappointments. And disappointment number one is this, uh, another lip balm. I guess it's lip balm season. This Kosas lip balm, this is the Kosas Plump and Juicy Collagen Lip Boost. The name sounds incredible. Who does not want a plump and juicy collagen lip boost? This is just a clear lip balm. Does not agree with my lips. Whenever I put this on, I don't know if I'm sensitive to one of the ingredients or something, my lips get drier than, like my lips get drier 
when I put this on. I don't like the texture, it's kind of thin. It's like a flimsy, thin lip balm that doesn't really do anything. I much prefer the Ilia Lip Wrap Balm. This is so nice, it's so cushiony, and it actually feels really, like it feels like it just envelops your lips in a, in a comforting, cocooning layer. Another lip balm that's clear that I love is the Jouer Essential Lip Enhancer. The next product that I tried that really did not work for me is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I was super, super interested in this. A lot of people seem to love it. And this looks really, really bad, both under my eyes. I also tried to use it on my face and it just does not wear well. If I found it really clung to, any dry patch, even dry patches I didn't know existed. Um, and it just did not wear well on, on my skin, even when I tried to apply it on other areas of my face. It's just not flattering. Not as good as other concealers that I have that I love. Another disappointment is a product that I actually really love, but the disappointment is the fact that it went bad so quickly and it's the Merit Highlighter. This is in the shade Bounce. I love this highlighter. It just gives me that like juicy, natural glow. It smells horrific now, like it just went bad so, so fast. I got this in April. Um, the packaging says that this is good for 12 months, so it has not been 12 months. Oh, I can't even, like I'm, I'm feeling nauseous just smelling it. It smells rotten. It's like rotten, molten plastic, and you know that scent. You can smell, you know when your makeup goes off, right? Um, so yeah, this is very, very disappointing. I haven't had this for the full year. Um, and it, it just went bad. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to use it, which is such a bummer because I really like this highlighter. It's really beautiful. Curious if this has happened to you, if you have this product, give it a sniff and let me know because this, does, this used to smell like nothing. And now it smells absolutely disgusting. Like I said, even on the packaging, this says that it's good for 12 months and it has not been 12 months. It's been like barely six. And finally, the last product is another cheek product that I got to try this month and it's just not, doesn't do it for me. It's the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush. Now I anti-hauled these. Um, the brand kindly sent me them still. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give them a try. The colors are absolutely beautiful. So this came in a little Christmas value set, really, really good value for money. And the colors are stunning. The colors are Coastline and Southbound, a really beautiful kind of like a nude shade and then a really pretty powdery pink. But this formula just does not look nice on my cheeks. I tried, I tried it without foundation. I tried it with different kinds of foundation. You know, I tried it with a tinted moisturizer underneath. I tried it with a more matte foundation underneath, a more luminous foundation underneath, no foundation, and it still looks so patchy. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I tried applying with fingers. Even with fingers, it looks patchy. I'm unable to get this not to look patchy. So I'm, I'm very curious. If you have this product and you like it and this works for you, let me know how you use it. If you're somebody that loves this formula, definitely check out that holiday duo because it's a great value and these colors are just so, so stunning, especially for every day. But yeah, I'm, I'm just not not really gelling with this uh, with this particular blush formula. Another holiday set though that they sent over that I really love, um, that I thought I would kind of shout out just in case you're doing any holiday shopping because this is a set that they do. They do something like this every year and I usually buy one of these for my mom because the caviar sticks, the Laura Mercier caviar sticks are my mom's favorite eyeshadow product. She's very much a one and done eyeshadow person and she loves how long wearing these are and they're just really flattering. Anyway, so I usually, um, when, I, when I know she's running low, I usually get her caviar sticks um, for, for the holidays. And this is the, the rose gold edition from this year. You get these three beautiful mini caviar sticks in a set, really good price point if you're if you're looking to get a beauty lover in your life a gift. And honestly, who does not love the Laura Mercier caviar sticks? The colors are so, so pretty. And um, I especially love this light color. The light colors are so nice for just dabbing into the inner corner. You don't even need a brush. You literally just stamp it on the inner corner and you're good to go. One miss and one hit from Laura Mercier from, from their holiday, holiday collection. But I am very grateful that they sent this stuff over so I can try it and report back. So that concludes this episode of my current beauty favorites. As always, I will be chatting with you in the comment section below. Let me know what you've been loving. I always love knowing what you're interested in in the comments. 
and I hope you're having a beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!